Assalamu alaikum. In this lesson, we will develop the A star search algorithm. This will be the final output of our code, which at the moment is for 15 by 20 size of maze, but it can work on any size maze like maze of size 100 by 100. The algorithm searches for the goal and then finds the direct path from star to goal. A star search gives the optimal solution for searching the maze. Does optimal mean the shortest search path? In general, yes. The solution will be the shortest path, but if not properly coded, it can be other than the shortest path. We will see what that means. We studied depth first search and breadth first search in last two videos. BFS or breadth first search gives the shortest path solution for sure. So then why we are interested in A star algorithm? The reason is the efficiency of the A star search. It searches very few cells to find the shortest path as compared to BFS search. As an example, see this case where BFS is applied on a 20 by 30 size maze. The BFS had to search all 600 cells that are shown in blue or cyan color to find the shortest path which is shown in the yellow color. And the shortest path is of the length 49 cells. On the other hand, when the same maze is searched using the A star algorithm, it searched only 55 cells to find the same shortest path. So 600 cells searched using the BFS versus the 55 cells searched using the A star. And that is a big difference. We will discuss the difference between BFS and A star in detail. So let's get started. This is one sample maze on which we will study the A star algorithm. This is the start cell and this is the goal cell. Firstly, unlike DFS and BFS which are uninformed of the blind searches, A star is an informed search algorithm, which means that it will take into account the location of the goal while deciding the next move. For example, if you are in this cell, you can next move to these two cells, but A star search algorithm will select this cell because it will bring you closer to the goal. And that is why it is an intelligent algorithm as compared to BFS or DFS. Now let's see how this algorithm works. Basically, there is a cost associated with each cell of the maze and A star will try to select the path with minimum cost. F of n is the cost of a node or a cell and it has two components G of n and H of n. G of n is the actual cost to reach from start node to node n or start cell to cell n. It is the number of steps to reach to the cell from the start cell. Then H of n is the heuristic cost, which is the estimated cost to reach to the goal. Let me explain that with an example. Consider this cell. The cost to reach to this cell from the start cell is 2 because from the start cell we can reach here in 2 steps and that is G of n. Then H of n is the estimate of the cost to reach to the goal. Of course, we do not know the path to reach to the goal, but we will simply estimate that. That estimate can be this distance, which is the Euclidean distance between this cell and the goal cell. Of course, we cannot move diagonally, but this distance is just an estimate. The second better option for the heuristic function for this case can be the Manhattan distance. It is not the diagonal distance, but the horizontal and vertical distance. It is actually the shortest possible distance to the goal if there is no blocked cell. Remember this is just the estimate and not the actual path that could be followed in each case. So using the Manhattan distance, the heuristic cost of this cell will be 4. So the total cost of this cell is 2 plus 4, 6. You can say G of n provides the actual cost to reach to a cell and H of n provides the estimated cost to reach to the goal from that cell and their sum is the total cost of that cell. Now let's see how A star search will explore the path till it finds the goal. These are the cell indices as row number and column number. We are at the starting cell. When we are at starting cell, the cost to reach to the start cell is 0 since we are already there. And the heuristic cost of this cell is 6, which is the Manhattan distance to the goal cell. For the rest of the cells, we do not know the G cost and the H cost at the moment, so we will consider those as infinity. We are at start cell and from here we will explore the next possible cells. From the start cell, the possible neighbor is just the not erection cell which is 3, 4. So we will first calculate the cost of the cell 3, 4. We need one step to move to the cell 3, 4, so G of n will be 1. And then H of n is the Manhattan distance from cell 3, 4 to the goal cell 1, 1. And the value is 5. So the total cost F of n is 6. The previous cost of the cell is infinity and this cost is 6, which is less than the previous cost. So we will replace the previous cost with the new better cost. We are still on the start cell and will see the entire maze to find the cell with the minimum cost and that of course is the cell 3, 4. So we will move there. Now on cell 3, 4 we will explore its neighbors and will update their cost. Cell 3, 4 has 3 neighbors and we will calculate their cost. Let's first do it for the cell 4, 4. If we go to cell 4, 4 from cell 3, 4, the cost G of n will be 1 more than that of the cell 3, 4 which becomes 2. G of n equal to 2 for cell 4, 4 means that if we start from the cell 4, 4, in 2 steps we can reach to cell 4, 4. 
which is basically moving to cell 3, 4 in first step and then to cell 4, 4 in the second step. Anyways, the HFN for cell 4, 4 is 6 and the total cost will be 8. Now let's calculate the cost of the other two neighbors. For cell 3, 3, its GFN cost will be 1 more than the GFN cost of the cell 3, 4, which becomes 2 and HFN is 4 and so the total cost is 6. Similarly, for the third neighbor cell 2, 4, the GFN will be 2 and HFN is 4 and the total cost will be 6. We have calculated the cost of the three neighbors of the cell 3, 4. Now we will see if we are getting a better cost or not. For example, for cell 4, 4, the previous cost is 6 and the new cost is 8. So we will not update the cost. It simply means we do not want this two-step movement from cell 4, 4 to 3, 4 and then back to 4, 4, which is very obvious. For the other two cells, the old cost is infinity and the new cost is 6. So we will replace the old cost with the new cost. We are still at cell 3, 4 and will decide the next cell based on the present minimum cost. We will not consider this cell because it has already been visited and its cost is not updated after we visited it. I will indicate that with a yellow bar. Only the cell which are not visited yet or their cost has been updated will be considered for the next step movement. Let's choose the cell with the minimum cost. Both these cells have the minimum cost of 6. Now which one to choose from these? A better approach will be choosing the cell which is more close to the goal cell because that will lead to the goal quickly. Closeness to goal cell is actually the heuristic cost of the cell and the heuristic cost of these two cells is also same as 4. So we have tie on the second level of comparison as well and in that case we can choose any cell and suppose we choose this cell 2, 4. Now we will repeat the process a bit quickly. There are two neighbors of the cell 2, 4. These are the updated cost of the two neighbors. For cell 3, 4 new cost is higher than the old cost. So that will not be updated but we will update the cost of the cell 2, 3. Now we will search for the cell with the minimum cost. These two cells have the minimum cost of 6. Both have the same minimum cost but the cell 2, 3 has lower heuristic cost. So we will select this cell now. We will repeat the process. Cell 2, 3 has two neighbors. These are the new cost. For cell 2, 4 it is higher than the previous cost. So we will ignore that. And for cell 1, 3 we will update the cost. Now to choose the next cell, again these two cells have the same minimum cost and we will choose cell 1, 3 because it has lower age cost as compared to cell 3, 3. Repeat the process. The next cost of the three neighbor cells is shown here and the two have the better cost compared to the previous cost and that will be updated. Now look for the minimum cost of the unexplored cells. These two have the minimum cost and we will select 1, 2 because it has a lower age cost. From cell 1, 2 this is the new cost of the neighbor cells. Only one will get updated. Now we will search for the cell with the lowest cost and this time just the cell 3, 3 has the lowest cost and so we will move there. This is the beauty of A star algorithm. Although we are moving away from the goal cell, but the overall cost of the cell 3, 3 is the lowest at this stage, which means there can be possibility of overall minimum cost to goal from this cell 3, 3. And hence the algorithm is not ignoring that possibility. Anyways, from cell 3, 3, the new cost of the neighbor cells is calculated and one better than the previous cost is updated. Now we will search for the cell with the minimum cost which is not explored yet. These two have the minimum cost of 8 and we will choose cell 22 since it has the lower age cost. These are the new cost and the one better is updated. The next cell is 21 because it has the minimum cost of 8 and has the lower age cost. These are the new cost of the three neighbors and the two are updated. Now the cell with the minimum cost are these two and we will choose the one with the lower age cost which is the cell 11 and that is the goal. So we reach the goal and then there is a way to select just this path which is the optimal and the shortest path. To implement this algorithm we need to use a data structure known as priority queue. A simple queue works on the principle of FIFO which means the first inserted item will come out first. On the other hand in priority queue the stored items come out on the basis of priority and not on the basis of the order of their entry. The item with highest priority will come out first no matter at which position it was entered. So what is the priority of an item? The priority can be the value of the item. For example, the highest value has the highest priority or it can be the lowest value having the highest priority. In Python, we have the priority queue available in the module queue and the priority is the lowest value of the item inside the priority queue. In A star algorithm, we need to pick the cell with the lowest cost and hence the priority queue is the most suitable. This is the pseudocode of A star algorithm. We are defining the priority queue named as open. Then are the two dictionaries for G cost and F cost. Both are set to infinity for all cells except the start cell. G cost of the start cell is 0, while the F cost of the start cell is the value of the heuristic function of the start cell. Because F cost is G cost plus H cost and G cost is 0 for the start cell. So F cost of the start cell is same as the heuristic cost of the start cell. 
Then we will put the first entry inside the queue that consists of three values. This is for the start cell. The three values are f cost of the start cell, then the h cost of the start cell, and then the start cell itself. These three values can be as one tuple or as one list. A tuple is a better option. Remember, we need to find the cell with the minimum f cost. So the first element of the tuple is the f cost. So the cell with the lowest f cost will be selected. If the first element of two tuples is same, then the minimum is decided by the second element, which is the h cost. As we said, in case of two cells having the same minimum cost, we will choose the one closer to the goal. Then third element is the cell itself. Then we have a while loop until the priority queue is not empty or the goal is reached. We will get the minimum value from the priority queue and will pick the cell value. We are calling that as current cell. Then we will explore each possible neighbor cell or the child cell. First, we will compute the new G-score of the child cell, which is the G-score of the current cell plus one. And then we will find the F-score of the child cell. If that computed F-score is better score, meaning lesser than the previous score, then we will update the G-score and F-score of the child cell. And we'll put the information as three value tuple inside the priority queue. This will continue till the goal is reached. Remember, queue empty condition will be true only when there is no path to reach to the goal. Now let's implement this algorithm in Python. For that, we will import the class maze from the module PyAmaze. This is the module we created to assist in maze generation and visualization. You can install this package as pip install PyAmaze, or you can copy the module code provided in the description and create a file pyamaze.py inside the working directory and paste the code in that file. There was a detailed video on the use of the module PyAmaze. If you haven't watched the video still, you can continue because it is quite easy to use this module. We will create the maze object and we'll specify some size, for example, 55. Then we need to apply the method create maze on the maze object to create the maze. Then the last statement is the run function to run the simulation. If we run this code, this is the randomly generated 5x5 maze. Every time we will run the code, it will generate a new random 5x5 maze. Also keep in mind the indices of the cells of the maze, which are the row number and the column number. And also note that this last row column cell is the start cell and the first cell is the go cell by default. And we can easily change those if we want. The maze attributes you need to know in order to implement the A star algorithms are rows for the number of rows of the maze, calls are the number of columns of the maze. Then there is one very important attribute maze underscore map. Let's see the value. It is a dictionary. The keys are the cells and the value is another dictionary with keys as east, west, north and south and the value is 0 or 1. 1 means the path in that direction is open and 0 means the path is closed. For example, for cell 1, 1, just east is open and all other are closed. See that on the generated maze, just the east direction is open. Similarly is the information of all other cells of the maze. One last parameter you need to know is grid. It is simply a list of all cells inside the maze. This is a list of 25 cells from 1 1 to 5 5. Now we will implement the A star algorithm. First let's create the heuristic function h. It is the Manhattan distance between two cells. So input will be two cells say cell 1 and cell 2. Both will be as a tuple and the output is the Manhattan distance between the two cells. Now let's create the function a star for the a star algorithm. The input is one maze. Firstly, I am defining the start cell which is the last row and the last column of the maze. Now I will define two dictionaries for g score and f score. I will use dictionary comprehension that for cell in maze.grid list, key will be the cell and value will be infinity. The g score value of the start cell is zero, so we can set that here. Similarly will be the dictionary for f score. f score of the start cell is the heuristic cost of the start cell plus g score of the start cell. The g score of the start cell is zero. So the total f score of the start cell is the h cost of the start cell, which is the Manhattan distance between the start cell and the goal cell, which is cell 1 1. Now we need a priority queue. So I will import the priority queue from the module queue. I will create a priority queue named as open. Then we should put the first entry inside a priority queue, which is the information of the start cell as a tuple. First value will be the f cost of the start cell, which is the heuristic cost plus the g cost, which is zero. I can skip plus zero here. Then second is the heuristic cost and third is the cell value itself. Now will be the while loop that priority queue open is not empty. 
I will add the goal condition inside the loop body. I will pick the value from the priority queue. That will be the minimum value on the basis of the F cost and then on the basis of the H cost. But I need the cell value which is the third element inside the tuple so I can specify the index 2 to get the third element which is cell. If that current cell is the goal, I will end the process. The goal by default is 1 1 but we will have the code for any goal cell. Otherwise we will explore all four neighbors, east, south, north and west. First we will see that the path in that direction is open. We will use maze underscore map dictionary I showed earlier. The key will be the current cell. Value is also a dictionary and I need to check the key which is the loop variable D. Only if that is 1, we will find the neighbor cell or child cell. Neighbor cell will be different in each direction. So we will have 4 if conditions for the 4 directions. If direction is east, the child cell is on the right side. So row index will be same as of the current cell and column index will be one more than that. Similarly, I will find the child cell for other 3 directions. Please note that only one if condition will be true in each iteration of the for loop. Once the child cell is found, we will calculate new g-score which is simply the g-score of the current cell plus 1. And new f-score is the new g-score plus the heuristic cost of the child cell. Then we will see if this new f-score is less than the previous f-score. We will update the G-score and the F-score of the child cell. Plus we will add one entry into the priority queue having the three values, the F-score of the child cell, H-score of the child cell and the child cell itself. All three inside a tuple. This completes our algorithm. We have not calculated the path yet, but let's first run the code and see if there is some error. So apparently the code is fine. Now for the final path from start cell to goal cell, see this explanation. We can store the path as dictionary, let's say a path. One way can be storing the current cell as the key and the child cell as a value. Cell 44 will be the key and the cell 34 will be the value. This will be the next pair. Then this one, cell 34 is added as a key second time. But you should know that a dictionary cannot have the duplicate keys and the previous pair gets overwritten. And hence this arrow is not saved. So we cannot store the path like this. Now let's store the path with the child cell as a key and the current cell as a value. So this will be the first pair, then this one, and now this one. Here the cell 34 is stored as a value and not as a key, and in dictionary we can have multiple values. So both pairs will remain in the dictionary unlike what happened previously. And so on other pairs till we reach the core. This highlighted path is the reverse path from goal to start. To get the forward path from start to goal, we need to invert the directions of the arrows which are inside this highlighted path. And this will be the forward path from start to goal. Let's do it in code. I will declare an empty dictionary. And then here I will add one key value pair with the key as the child cell and value as the current cell. Dictionary A path is the reverse path and I need to invert just the highlighted path. For that I will declare another dictionary forward path and then on the path from goal to the start cell, I will swap the keys and the values of the A path dictionary. I will start from the goal cell until I reach the start cell. I will pick the value from the A path dictionary and will make that as key of the forward path. And the value of the forward path will be the key of the A path. Then the next cell and so on. Note that this while loop will execute only on the highlighted path. Finally, I will return the forward path. Here I will assign the output to some variable like path. And now we need to move an agent on this calculated path. For that I will import the agent class available in the PyMS module. I will create an agent. And one mandatory input argument is the parent maze which is our maze m. By default agent is placed on the start cell. Then in the maze class we have a method trace path. As input we provide one dictionary with key as agent and value as path which is the output of our A star algorithm. You can see an agent following the path found by A star algorithm. To see the full trace we can set the optional argument footprints equal to true. 
and now is another random 5x5 five five maze and agent is following the path. We can also display the length of the path found by the algorithm. For that we will import the text label class from the PyMaze module. I will create a text label object. First argument is the parent maze which is M. Then we need to provide the title. And then the value to be displayed. You can see the length of the path is displayed as 15. You can count these cells. Now I will put this code inside the if statement double underscore name double underscore equal to double underscore min double underscore because it is a standard way and you can watch the video provided in the description for detail. Finally I have another file as a stardemo.py where I have extended the simulation a little more and you can visualize the search path as well. Firstly this function will work for any start cell and it has three outputs. Search path is the path showing how the search was extended. A path is the reverse path from goal to start and then the forward path is the path from start to goal. In main program I have provided the maze as csv file. It is the maze we considered while studying the pseudocode. It is searching the goal, the reverse path and then the agent following the forward path. Then is the code with the maze size 10 by 15. The goal is set as cell 64 and the start cell is 112. It is searching the goal the reverse path to the start cell and now the agent is following the forward path. You should try the code on the bigger mazes as well. So a star search has given us good results as the shortest path to the goal but the same is achieved using the breadth first search. So why should we prefer a star on BFS? Basically it is about the efficiency of the a star algorithm which is much better than BFS. And in that efficiency, the heuristic function plays the most important role. If the heuristic function is not chosen intelligently, that can result into inefficient solution. I think this video has gone a bit lengthy. So I will have the next video to discuss and present the difference between A star and BFS. And we will see the efficiency of both and the role of the heuristic function in A star search algorithm. So that's all from this lesson. If you found the content helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also check the other content related to Python programming, PLC programming, sensors and instrumentation stress raw available on the channel. Thanks for watching.